hey welcome to the channel so today i'm going to take you through my local development workflow with docker i'm going to show you how we can use multi-stage builds to create slim down linux based uh, images and next we'll see when we're developing an api and we need say to talk to an elastic search cluster and a database how to go about setting up my local development uh, workstation so let's get to it so here I have some simple API code set up with uh, Golang. Let's look at uh, let's look at the Docker file. So now with multi-stage builds, you can think about first step is compiling your code and uh, getting an executable ready, and the second stage is executing it. So here with Golang, we start with a base Golang image, so an official Golang image. And then we execute this command, the go build command to create our executable. Next, since I have ex uh, compiled this or built this for a Linux based environment, I'm starting with a slim down Linux distro. In this case, it's uh, Debian. It is quite common to use Alpine based images and I have used them in the past. The only caveat with those is Alpine based images are built with Muscle and BusyBox. They do not use the standard GNU libc. So there is a slight possibility of certain things misbehaving. You need to be aware of that. But I personally have not noticed any issues. I recently came about these Debian based images and I like that they have, you know, hyphen slim, which is like a slimmed down version. And Debian, as you know, is like the most stable Linux distro out there. So that's why I'm just trying that out now. So once we start with the Debian images, what we do is we just copy over our artifact from the previous step. So what we're left with is a vanilla Linux container with a deployed with a code deployed on it and nothing else. Now let me go. Let me show you how that helps. Okay. So let's go ahead and build the Docker image. Docker build. I just given it a tag. So what happens? Build, build, build. So now we have our image. Let's look at the size. So I'll do Docker. yt so you see it's just 86.9 mb whereas if we look at the base golang images they are around 800 mb so here's a slightly a complicated example again i have a backend based on uh, golang and i have a ui based in vue.js so i start with my compiling my api code here with the golang image and then i move here to a node.js image and as you know when you run npm install it downloads the entire internet but here what i'm able to do is i build my ui and then finally you have used an alpine based image over here vanilla alpine image all i do is copy over my api and copy over my UI base files. So that's why multi stage builds are pretty neat. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is how to use Docker Compose to set up my development workstation. So I'll walk you through the code that I have really quick. Let's go to main. So here's a simple uh, API. I'm using Go Fiber, just something new I'm trying out. I've set up uh, three endpoints. One is a simple one that just says hello world. One connects to ES and one connects to uh, Postgres database server. Okay. Let me quit it. Go run. I'm just going to execute it here. And it's running. Let's create another tab and I'll do CEO. So 
this is the simple hello world is working now if i hit the yes oops did not work if i hit the pg oops did not work let's see why so essentially since i have not set this up on my local system i cannot access it so let's see how to fix that with docker compose so now i have a docker compose file here so docker compose essentially is a way to combine multiple docker services together so now over here i know i need es and a database which is postgres so that's why i've defined them that way it is it's the same convention that we would use you tell it what the image is define your ports expose some properties here and there we'll get to this admin later just ignore it for now so pretty simple setting this up docker compose up and that should come up let me just show you something in the code okay i go here So what I've done for both ES and the Postgres database is the URL I take from an environmental variable, which is elastic IP over here. And even the database is over here. So I need to get that exported before this works. Let me go ahead and do that. So database. It's the default. I've not done anything fancy. The only thing that's custom is the password, which is my password. Do not copy my password. And then, then I'll go ahead and do a run again. Run. Okay. And now this works. If I hit yes it works if i hit pg it works so there's one little thing that you need to be aware of when using uh, docker compose or docker in general one of those services in that docker compose file was adminer it's uh, just a very minimal admin ui for databases so let's try and connect to our postgres database so our server is local host Username is Postgres, password is my password, database is Postgres. Didn't work. Now, why? When you deploy multiple services with Docker uh, Compose, all of them get deployed in an internal Docker network. So now in this case, Adminer and the database server are in that same network. In the case of when we were executing our Golang project earlier, it was outside that network. So that is why I could access it on localhost. But over here, I cannot access it with localhost since it's in the network. What I need to do is I need to take an extra step. So what I can do is Docker PS. Ah uh i need the database so i'll do a docker and inspect dev env docker i should have given it a shorter name Maybe underscore one uh, so now in this local network or environment that the docker compose uh, created uh, all the images get assigned an IP. So I need to find out that IP right now. I'll just do a... Now let me try with this. 172, 21 is 0.3. 172.21.0.3. Everything. And it works. 
Uh, the last use case with Docker is something a bit out of the box. I do not know if people use this, but I use it from time to time, like, you know, to do quick POCs. Let's say, suppose my current system has Python version 2. I need to quickly POC something with uh, Python 3. So now I could go ahead and download it and set that up. But an easy hack is to do something like this. Docker, I'm essentially executing a python3 image so when i use the it switch it goes into interactive mode and the command that i'm executing is python so as soon as i do this i'm in a python 3.9 shell so this is kind of out of the box i do not know how useful it is it it depends but i kind of like it so that's about it for today's video i hope you find this useful Docker is amazing. You should definitely try and work it into your de development workflow. Thank you.